homemakers, welcome back to another day of The Nebraskan Wife. Thanks for coming back. Today we're gonna go through a little bit about our homeschool year. We are a week into our homeschool semester and I thought I'd give a little rundown of what we're doing so far. Um, it's still pretty early. We're only, like I said, a week in. So you never know what is gonna work the full year and what's not, but we are gonna roll with it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe this video, share it with your friends. If you're new here, check out my other videos. I've got everything from make-aheads to meal ideas to family talk to travel. I do a little bit of everything. So please join us if you're not new here. Thanks for coming again. Please share it with your friends. Okay, so let's get into this. So I used to, let me backtrack. I homeschool year round. I don't believe in stopping homeschool through the summer because the kids just forget everything. So what I do is I usually do four days a week and then we have our other time off. So that's kind of an extra day off in the week and then the two days off that my husband should have off. We always try to keep one of those days a family day so we can go out, do stuff, have some family time, break it down. This is by no means a rock solid plan it changes. You have to give yourself a little bit of grace. There are some years I started out with the bus system in my mind and halfway through the year, I throw that to the wind and come up with a whole new plan. So I start with the best intentions and we see where it goes. Um, my kids needs kind of change year by year. So I adjust to whatever their learning needs are right now. So currently I have a fourth and fifth grader. So what I'm doing is, since my children are so close in age and kind of abilities at this moment, I think there'll be a little bit of differences coming by the end of the semester, but we're starting them on all the same things. Some of it will be easy for one of them. Some of it will be harder for one of them. I'm just gonna roll with it if I think they need more work or I, if I think it's a little bit too easy, I will go ahead and just push forward. So a little breakdown every day. I give each of the kids, I'm keeping all their main homework and stuff in their little notebook. So in their notebook, just to help with writing and stuff, we are going through and I have them do their spelling words and then I have them use the computer to look up a dictionary, write their words, and that goes through. You can see they needed to just reduce some work and things like that. But a typical day will go will look like this. We'll all have their basic stuff and things that they will be responsible for here. This is what I'm using to help teach them, you know, where things go on a page, not forgetting to write their name and date, keeping things neat and tidy, and then any of their work for the day will go in here as well as any of their redo work. And that goes for both kids. And at the end of the day, they handed in my handout box, which right there is my cat right now, so that's not gonna happen. Okay, for history this year, we are starting out with ancient civilization and colonial America. I am going to start with a colonial America just because it's more pertinent to what we're dealing with right now. I probably will throw in some ancient history, but this first semester we're focusing solely on colonial America. Now this does say the ancient civilization is one through grades one through three and colonial is four through six. I feel like you could pretty much interchange this. This isn't anything super difficult. You just make like your little pocket pages. So I don't think that's gonna be that bad. Now, um, this is some writing skills. Now this does say grade two, but I'm just doing some review with the kids and just making sure everybody's on the same page and we haven't missed something. It is really easy, but it's, I like the repetitive work for them. This is something new we're gonna do is Money Quest. It's financial literacy. This is for third and fourth grade. This is something new we're trying out this year. I want to make sure that our kids are super independent and can handle their money and things like that. This one basically goes through, it gives you your story and you can kind of, let me see if I can pull it up here. So it'll go through, you'll have your little story and things like that and then it'll end up having an activity at the end of the page. This is only gonna be a once a week thing because I think this is kind of a mix between brain and math and it has a lot of skills in one. So I'm all about something that will have more than just one focused skill. 
And I'm hoping this will kind of help them understand where money goes, how we handle money, what we do with money, things like that. This year for math, I am doing a couple different things. I'm mixing our, where is it? Right Start Mathematics. You can see this right here. Um, this is by Joan A. Cotter. I really like this um, set. It has a lot of like games and it's very visual math. And I think it's really great for those that aren't so book minded. There's a lot of, there's a lot of games, a lot of hands on. We use an abacus with that, which I feel like helps our, my children a lot. And so it comes with your worksheet book. It comes with a teacher book and it also comes with math card games book right here. Um, this one, we had purchased it at a homeschool conference and actually it had everything we need for um, basically like elementary all the way up to high school. I will have to change the level of the book, but as far as the manipulatives and all the cards and things like that, I have all those. So all I need is the books to transfer. Um, along with our history, we are also going to be doing this book, Maps of America. I have another set of maps and things like that. This will help us when we introduce our regions and we're gonna go through all of our states, things like that. It's just gonna be easier to do them once instead of me having to teach it multiple times because I do not like repeating myself. Yes. Last year I used a curriculum by Amy Marion. She's a mom to several children. I can't remember how many she has right now. Um, You've heard me mention her before. She did put out a basic curriculum. I really like it because I can order the book from Amazon. I can rip out the pages. I can do whatever I want. If I need to travel, if I need to do not be home, whatever, it works really well. This one also is nice because I can print off a left-handed spelling sheet for my daughter since she is a lefty and she definitely appreciates it. So here it is. Here's your third grade basic skills and here is your fourth grade basic skills. Every day you will have your reading, writing, and arithmetic. So let me get to a page. And this is this is based off of, I think, four days a week, if I'm remembering correctly. Okay, yeah, here we go. So you start out, oh, I already ripped out the page. So normally you would have your spelling page right here and you would do your spelling words. Then the next day of the week you would do your copy words and it's always has your math and reading or something like that and then you write your sentences so it's it's really straightforward and then you have your spelling tests it is a really straightforward curriculum i really enjoy it because it. i'm sorry it's hot in here um it keeps it really basic so as far as all that goes i am starting with that I'm doing my history most days, or his social studies most days of the week, depending on what I have. It'll be a mixture of the states and maps and things like that. Math will be every day. Language arts will be every day. Um, science might be once a week. I haven't quite decided on what we're doing for science yet. We may be combining with another family. I don't know yet. Um, but yeah, so most of our learning happens at our dining room table. I start the morning, make sure they have their chores, their breakfast, they're ready to go for the day. We start out doing our homework. We may have to do a little bit of a break. We come back to it. And then if we get done, they have a little time before lunch. After lunch, I usually do um, a short devotional pertinent to whatever is happening on in the households. And then I go through we usually do our reading in the afternoon. It kind of breaks it up and I mean, my kids don't really like to read first thing in the morning, so I just go from there. Um, I did redo my school area, as you can probably see the mess behind me. Um, I've given up on keeping it completely tidy. We know where everything is and it works great for us. I've got a mixture over here of our pens and pencils and stuff like that. Back here are my kids electronic boxes where all their electronics get kept so I can see what's in what's out and then my area hand in area underneath um, you can see kind of right here I keep 
our curriculum boxes, any extra stuff we need. I mean, it's nothing fancy. It works. It's not permanent. I just had to compile everything. I do have another crate that has some of our other schoolwork in it if I need to supplement or need to find something else. This year I am also including a little bit of computer work because I want them to start understanding more how the computer works and get more into technology, more STEM based things. I do have some books this year as well that I didn't mention that I'm doing more to help with emotions and big feelings and, and things like that just to help out. Also, I do have a, some fun little engineering books for my son because he's very into that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little homeschool chat. I just wanted to show you kind of what we're doing. No matter what you pick, you are your child's best advocate. You know how they learn, you know how they are. Don't let anyone try to pressure you into, oh, this curriculum is the best. Trial and error, mamas. I mean, some will work, some won't work. You'll figure it out. Give yourself grace. Not everything will be done today, and that's okay. Lay out a week at a time. See what works best for you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask message down below, send me a direct message on Instagram, things like that. That is totally fine. Don't forget, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at The Nebraskan Wife. I will post that down below as always, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye guys.